All right, I'll talk to you guys after the performance. Here we go. Okay, so I'm here in Belgrade. I'm in my hotel room. I have finally moved all my things and uh, now it's time to go get some breakfast and coffee. Oh my God. Okay, so something I always try to do when I go to compete for a few days or I'm gonna be in a new city is find the nearest grocery store. Over here, there's this maxi and get some essentials like i got oranges bananas bar of chocolate water here yeah that way you're not buying food everywhere you go and usually you're buying worse food because you know you're going to get pizza after competing or beer or whatever and well, it's a good idea to do that it's good to have some things for breakfast or just a snack on rather than going and spending a lot of money now it's time to go practice. Okay, I am in the elevator. It's almost competition time. I think I've got about an hour till my time. Uh, just had an easy morning, got breakfast, just a little bit of coffee. Breaking my own rules. But uh, yeah, coffee, a nice warm up. Try not to overplay, some slow practice. And now I'm heading over to what I think is the right music school. I'm gonna go in a taxi and I'll check in with you guys afterwards. This is stage one, 27 competitors. Yeah, I was saying most of the competitors are Serbian. There's a few from Switzerland, Hungary, um, Croatia, Austria. But yeah, quite a big first round. And I think they're just picking between four and six for the next. So we'll see how it goes. I'm going to play my best. And yeah, I'll check in soon. Okay, so I am in the warm-up room now. It is 11.40 and I have about 30 minutes, 32 minutes before I go on. And fortunately, I think this is going to stay an individual practice room. It's a big room that sounds nice and I have some light control over how much air gets in. I'm really excited to go in. I think there's gonna be some good judges there because the artists are amazing this time. So I'm looking forward to seeing them and hopefully it's a hall that I'm playing in. I should have asked that. But anyways, as you can see, I'm a little bit nervous and I'm gonna get back to practice so that recording this video doesn't affect my performance. It's about six or seven minutes or less to go time. It's supposed to be 12 12. And uh, I'm excited. I just want to play. Okay, so I just played. <sighs> and I just wanna say some post-performance thoughts. Um, one of them was, it felt really good. The hall was great. Uh, I enjoyed it in there. There's a warm audience that was very quiet. Um, the Scarlatti, I started too fast. So I had to keep the tempo. Um, and I think I did, which is good, but the second time of the B section got a little sloppy. The first time was like, great, like one of my best. Even though I made a couple mistakes, I was feeling musical and had little clever ideas. Um, but I felt in control of the audience. That was the good thing about it. Um, but you know, there's a ton of competitors. I'm sure some people are gonna be playing some amazing things and play for the full 15 minutes. Uh, my set was about 10 minutes. We'll see the results tonight. But uh, yeah, we won't find out till probably like eight or 8.15 because there's a ton of competitors. Like I said, 27 people and 15 minute time slots. They have breaks and a lunch break and all sorts of different things. So. We'll see how it goes, but for now, I'm going to get a coffee because I haven't had much at all today, some food, and then I'm going to practice the second round material because that's tomorrow. So I'll find out tonight, and then likely tomorrow morning I'll have to play. I actually don't know when the round is, but likely tomorrow morning 
will be the time. So, you know, imagine I find out at eight o'clock tonight, um, I have to turn around, go to my hotel and practice for maybe only two hours um, before the final round tomorrow. So uh, yeah, today's round started at nine. So I imagine tomorrow's might be the same. So I'm in this park. It's really quite beautiful. It's a nice place to walk after performing. But now my right arm's getting tired from holding this phone, so I'm going to put it away. But that's my post-performance check-in. So I was just walking back from the competition and uh, grabbed some food. And now I'm looking for a quality cup of coffee because I didn't have much this morning. I had like a sip at the hotel breakfast. Um, but you know, I, I don't like uh, drinking coffee on the days of performance. But this place across the street caught my eye. I'm trying to figure out how to get over there. I think it's by going down this thing and then you come out over there. So I'll show you the place. Okay, yeah, I was right. This is the place, Aviator. Um, I think it looks pretty cool. Let's check it out. All right, so I knew this place was gonna be cool. As, as you can see, it's a, it's a pretty spacious place. A lot of the coffee bars here are really small, you know, all around the world, really. But here's something particularly neat. And although I don't use coffee at all in my, <laughs> I'm in, I don't use sugar in my coffee, um, but they have their Wi-Fi password on the sugar packet, which is awesome. Okay, so I'm back in my hotel room here. And to be honest with you, right now, these few hours are always the absolute worst times at guitar festivals. And that is after you play, waiting for results. For me, it usually starts out with celebration, something like I'll go get food and I'll treat myself, I'll get like a nice cup of coffee or something. And I'll think, yeah, I'm gonna be really productive after this. And then after that, it's just like, extreme stress. See, I really don't freak out that much before performing. It's really excitement and that's how I know I love what I do. But this is the part that's pretty terrible about competitions. It's just that waiting for results and trying to control that feeling and not let it mentally stress you out so much. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just wanted to share this sort of common thought, at least a lot of friends that I have that do a lot of competing, they experience the same thing. And it's always best when you have friends around so that you can go like explore a city or do something like that. But for me, I wanted to practice this next round's repertoire, which um, that'll be tomorrow morning, I think, will be the final round if I make it. So there's quite a lot of practicing that I needed to do because these works that I'm playing are not things that I've been performing a lot recently because of the masters, because of other videos that I've made, um, because of projects that I'm working on. So uh, yeah, I'm just getting those pieces ready to go and they're, they're coming along, but yeah, it's a, it's a really stressful time. And not to mention my eye finger here, um, the nail is very short on this side. And it's very difficult to tell on, on camera, but all of this Scarlatti K53 practice with my eye finger going down onto the bass strings, that really wears down this nail. So might tape it up later to protect it from uh, wearing down anymore. And uh, yeah, I'll check back in with you guys after I find out the results, no matter what they are. Once again, I'm back at my hotel. Um, good news, I made the finals, which was super exciting to find out um, because, you know, the more and more I hear people playing and uh, I see these people, 
I'm like, oh my God, there are so many good players at this competition. So I'm thrilled to make the final round. Um, I'm sorry if I sound super exhausted, but uh, since you've been following this journey too, um, you can probably see, you, or you probably realize that I've been up since like, I don't know, eight o'clock this morning. And I practiced for um, the first round today. And then, you know, practicing for that and then performing really takes a lot of energy, especially performing in a competition setting. There's like all this stress beforehand. Um, and then I just want to sleep afterwards, but I didn't. I got food and coffee, as you saw, and then I came back and I practiced. And then in the evening time, I went to a wonderful series of concerts, which ended in uh, Yamandu Costa and another wonderful player. And then it took about an hour after that concert for the results to come out. And uh, they were put up on a sheet of paper, which you guys can see here. And... Yeah, so it's basically everyone crowds around the paper and sees if they made finals. It's, it's kind of a strange way of doing things, but it, it made it exciting. Um, so I play fifth tomorrow, and it's around 4 or 4.30 in the afternoon. So that means I'll have time to sleep tonight. I think it's about 1.30 in the morning over here. So I'll probably get seven or eight hours of sleep. Really sleep well, let my hands rest because they feel exhausted after going through my repertoire. But uh, tomorrow I'll be playing some Schumann and followed by Scarlatti K209 and then Zambra by Albanes and then In Los Trigales by Joaquin Rodrigo and finally Primavera Partenia by Piazzolla. So a lot of random little pieces in there. Uh, We'll see how it goes. I feel pretty good about it now after practicing, but my hands are completely exhausted. Also, I probably don't sound that excited about making the final rounds right now because I'm really tired, but when I found out, I was super excited. But uh, you know, I don't wanna always be the guy that pulls out his phone and starts recording. Uh, so I didn't do that. I'm just exhausted and the high from it's worn out a little bit, so. You know, bear with me. I hope that some good rest will heal them up and uh, I will check in with you guys tomorrow. Good morning. It's very dark in this hotel elevator, but I'm currently headed up to the seventh floor here for the breakfast and a cup of coffee because I don't perform till 4.15 or 4.20 today. I'm looking forward to finally starting the day with a cup of coffee. Here we are. Okay, so first off, don't worry. This is not what I'm wearing to perform <laughs> later, but uh, I'm just practicing a bit before um, the finals. And I've still got a while. I've still got about five hours before I play. Um, so I'm just taking things slow and working through sections and getting my sound right and just trying to enjoy music. Um, obviously, this is the morning of the competition, so I'm just trying to take it easy with my hands and make sure I don't overwork because by the end of yesterday, my hands felt really exhausted and I just don't want to get to that today. Okay, so I'm back in my hotel. It's about five hours until I perform. So it's the day of the last round. I just wanted to talk about some things that I'm thinking about and um, what I'm working on this morning. So I definitely started with a slow warm up, doing things like, let me show you. Doing things like little quick bursts. Just to make sure I'm feeling really loose and not feeling tense. Making sure everyone is perfectly even and the same. 
and doing similar ornaments in the left hand, things like doing that type of thing with every group of things. Some of the things that I'm really trying to focus on are not wearing my hands out, trying to play really fast, doing run-throughs of my program. That's something I don't do on the day of the final round, at least. Um, usually final rounds are less about accuracy and more about musical expression and artistry. Um, in preliminary rounds, it's usually a mixture there's a lot of people that say it's about playing really perfectly in the first round, but I think that works if there's not that many people in the competition, but when you have over 20 people, um, there's quite a few people that I think play pretty clean that just focus on just that, and there's no, um, there's no focus on uh, being an artist, and you lose points because of that. So anyways, that's a talk for another day. But uh, yeah, I'm just trying to make sure my tone is on point, that I don't wear down my nails too far. I mentioned this last night, but my eye nail is very short. Let me see if I move this away from my face, if it'll focus. Yeah, so my nails are usually pretty short, but this side, so this, this side of my nail, is very short for my eye finger. But that's something that I'm trying to be careful not to wear down even more. So, yeah, I'm also looking forward to performing in a bigger hall with a little bit more reverb. That's the real beauty of playing in a final round because it's not always a dry room like prelim and semifinal rounds are. It's usually in a concert hall. So um, that also encourages more artistic thought. You know, it encourages you to take more time on notes that may not even sustain so much. So I get excited about that. So... I'm thinking about that a lot. I'm running through some areas in my pieces that are weak and uh, working on them slow, really just warming up my hands so that I feel like I'm the best I can be. And taking time to go outside and walk, you know, grab a cup of tea somewhere. Those types of things I think are really healthy because if you don't walk around and get outside of your hotel or practice room or whatever it is, you start feeling really stiff by the time you perform. So of course, in addition, I'm also recording this video, which to me is a really great use of uh, this time because a lot of this is just killing time too so that I don't drive myself crazy, but also I am able to possibly help someone in the future who watches this video, um, or at least it might be an interesting thing to see someone go through. But yeah, competitions are stressful, time consuming, but really exciting. Um, I'll update you possibly throughout the day, whatever I can mentally handle. Okay, it's about 45 minutes till go time, or maybe less if they're running ahead of schedule. So that makes me a little nervous. I need to go get there now, but it's only about a five minute uh, taxi ride to get there. I'm ready to go. I'm feeling a lot more confident with the way I play this set of music now than I was this morning and way more than I was feeling it last night. So I'm ready to go and I'll check in with you guys after the performance. Okay, I'm in the warm up room and it's probably about 15 minutes or so till go time and I'm feeling ready to go. I feel warmed up, confident. Um, I'm excited to play in this hall in general and this warm up room. Maybe from just my voice, you can tell it. It sounds really nice in here, so. It's nice when that happens and it's not some really, really dry uh, green room, so. All right, I'll talk to you guys after the performance. Here we go. <sighs> okay, I just finished performing and to be honest, I'm not very happy with how it went. Um, maybe it was this uh, common thing of expectation versus reality. In my practice room, it was a beautiful sound and I was told that the stage would be beautiful and that it was the sound of a big hall, but it was not. It felt super dry on stage. The chair was really far back. 
and it felt like I was slapping away at the strings. And to be honest, I made, it's so reverby in here, let me get out of here. I made quite a few crucial mistakes. <laughs> I had little memory slips, I jumped to a couple of different sections, hit spare strings here and there. And, and overall, beyond those little mistakes, I, I just didn't feel like my normal expressive self, like I didn't feel like completely relaxed and, um, and in control. That being said, the audience was great and when I got quiet, they really were silent. So that's always a good sign and it, it inspired me to be a little bit more expressive. But during the loud bits and like playing fast and stuff, things just fell apart. I felt like a beginner again, to be honest. So, you know, that's how it goes with this journey. These pieces for the final round were not nearly as prepared. Um, it, there was no repeating repertoire. So the things that I felt really great about in the first round are just gone. So, you know, I didn't prepare enough for this final. We'll see how the results are. If I get a prize, so first, second, or third, I'll be pretty surprised about that, surprised. Otherwise, you know, I learn, I get better at guitar, I gotta keep on practicing and learn more things. And yeah, I'll check in with you later um, after the award ceremony, or I guess the award ceremony is tomorrow, but we'll find out our scores after playing, which tells us if we get a prize or not. We'll see if I'm in the top three. I sort of doubt it, but we'll see. Okay, so right now I'm actually at a coffee shop in Spain, in the bathroom of that coffee shop, uh, because I realized that I didn't fill in the gaps after I competed and I was waiting for results. Um, I never really recorded that, uh, let you know about the results, or really record much of anything else of my time in Belgrade, so I want to fill that in. So, as expected, I didn't make the finals, um, you know, judging from my own performance and like you saw, I mentioned uh, earlier in this video. Um, but that's okay, um, you know, I was bummed out, but the, the hard thing to do is to bounce back and, you know, get back out there and meet people and enjoy the rest of the festival and, and focus on learning. And I'm happy to say I did that, I met some incredible people, I enjoyed a lot more of the city of Belgrade, and I saw some good concerts and master classes and is really a great time you know plus I was busy with like a lot of other projects I'm working on and lots of learning and music that I needed to do and just editing things for a video project that I had coming up and you know when you don't do as well as you'd like to do in a competition or a performance or whatever it is your natural response is like to get back to the grindstone and and work on what you were bad at and, and what went badly and uh, you really start to change your habits and and work harder Whereas when you do well, even though you wouldn't like to admit it, a lot of times in your mind you're like, well, I'm doing something right, or maybe my balance is right, I'm not really sure. So you just keep on doing your same habits and you don't improve as much in that way. So there's always something to be thankful for when you do badly, and there's always something to be thankful for when you do really well. On top of that, I was really happy just to make the finals of this really difficult competition. Uh, there was like tons of amazing players there. I didn't prepare enough for those as I was talking about, but I know there'll be a time soon where I'll be able to dedicate a lot of time just to competitions. We'll see when that comes, but for now, you know, it was, it was really exciting to make the finals in my, one of my first competitions overseas. I hope there's a lot more of those to come. This European scene is really cool. It's something really fresh, you know, after a couple of years of doing competitions in the States, it's been like uh, a little monotonous, you know, you always see the same people and, and those people do become your good friends, so that's exciting to see, but meeting a whole new set of people, seeing a whole new set of places, it's really inspiring. You're seeing different types of mindsets and yeah, it's a really great experience. Uh, I'll, I'll be returning back to the States in June, but I gotta get back out here. Anyways, enjoy the rest of the video and sorry to have to fill it in so late here, uh, I wish I could have express these things right in the moment but you know after the competition ended I was like oh, let's go meet people let's go do some things let's recoup and uh, now I'm giving you like an honest reflection so enjoy the rest of the video and I'll see you soon so right now I'm waiting because 
they are trying to make me check my guitar, not even gate check. Apparently it doesn't exist at this airport in Belgrade. And my guitar is right here. And I just asked them if they can call Lufthansa or something to try to help me out. Um, but it looks like I'm probably going to have to check this guitar the entire way through the connecting flight to Madrid, which is really scary. But thank God I have this Accord case. So I will know shortly. Okay. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. So you can go now to the gate. Awesome. Oh, so you said you changed my seat so that it's like in an yes, open aisle. Or it's, something. All, uh, it's window seat, but you're sitting on the lawn. Nobody's sitting next to you, so maybe they will allow you to bring it. In. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. This is going to be difficult to get the guitar on. So actually, it all turned out all right. Um, when I went to get my check my bags, um, the kind lady at uh, Lufthansa changed my ticket to a seat that had an empty seat next to it so that I could put my guitar right there. So thank God I thought maybe they'd give me trouble on the, uh, as I boarded, but all is okay. And now all that's left is to make sure it gets on the flight from Munich to Madrid. So that'll be two out of two and still have never had to check my guitar under the plane. Finally back in Alicante. Whew, you know what? I definitely learned a lesson this trip, which was just pay the extra whatever 50 or $60 it is to fly directly into Alicante rather than saving a few bucks and landing in Madrid because whew, I really underestimated how much extra time and money that eats up. Because, you know, the train station isn't right next to where the plane lands. The bus station isn't where the plane lands either. <sighs> and whew, it ate up a whole uh, entire day. So it's um, just past 5 a.m. right now and I'm on uh, quite a spooky walk. Um, I I've done this walk around this time on a Saturday and there's still a lot of people out partying because that's just what goes down in Spain. But check this out. That makes for a complete trip and uh, it was nice to bring you guys along. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, let me know if you'd like to see more things like this.